Hi everyone, this section is about finding the greatest common factor, factoring out the greatest common factor, and factoring by grouping. So to begin with, we have to concentrate on the GCF or the greatest common factor. And we're going to um, have different combinations of expressions to work with here for practice. So when we're looking for this, right, notice on step one it says find the GCF of the numerical coefficients. Step two, find the GCF of the vari variable factors. And then the product of the factors found in steps one and two is your GCF. Now on the first example, my numerical coefficients are all one. So we don't even really have to worry about that because uh, it's going to be a one, right, on that part. Now when we're looking at the variables, we have to look at what's the largest exponent that they all three have in common. Well, that would be whatever the smallest exponent happens to be because if we're going to factor it out, then each of these has to be divisible by that uh, variable with that particular exponent. And so in this case, it's going to be b squared, right? All of these have a b squared in common, because think about this. I have b to the ninth. So let's just look at this. If I take b to the ninth, I can write it as, um, hold on, I want to put an equal sign there. <laughs> um, I can write that as b squared times b to the seventh. And so I have a common b squared, right? On b to the fifth, I can write that as b squared times b to the third, right? 2 plus 3 is 5. And so I have a common b squared. And then just for the b squared, all I can do with that is say, oh, well, that's, um, I keep writing the time sign. That is b squared times 1. That's really all I could say there. So b squared is the greatest common, right, has to be in common, factor on these terms. And I showed it to you on each one of these, right? Okay, so this is our answer, right, the b squared. Okay, next. <laughs> so we do want to look at the coefficients. We have a 4, a 16, and an 8. Well, what's the greatest number of those that we can factor that would be a factor? And that happens to be the 4, right? So 4 is part of my GCF. And then I have an x to the first, x to the first, x to the second. So I have to take the smallest exponent, which is x to the first. I have y squared, y cubed, and y squared, so it would be a y squared. So I have 4xy squared. This is my common factor for these three terms. Okay, next. So there is a way where you could write this all out as multiplication. Uh, I think, and for the most part, most students don't need this. Um, if you think you do, then you may have to write it out and look at it that way. But let's, let's look at 12, 9, and 15. What's in common for 12, 9, and 15? The largest number that will divide into 12, 9, and 15. Well, that happens to be 3, right? So 3 is a common factor for 12, 9, and 15, the greatest common factor. <clears throat> and then let's look at the x's. So notice my first term doesn't have an x. So that means x can't be part of my, of my greatest common factor because it's not in common to all three terms. Now let's look at the y's. We have y squared, y cubed, y squared. So it will be y to the second, all right? And then on the z's, we have z to the fourth, z to the fourth, z to the third. It has to be the smallest exponent that would be in common. So z to the, the third. Therefore, our GCF is 3y squared, z to the third. Okay. Now, a lot of times our GCFs are not this complicated when we're actually factoring, which we're going to do here. Notice this says, factor out the GCF in each polynomial. So first we have to identify the GCF of the two terms, or three terms, it could be more, that are given. And notice on this first one, um, 
21 and 14 have a factor of 7 in common. And one term has an x, the other one doesn't, so we don't have a variable in common. So we just take out the 7. Technically, you're dividing, right? So you're saying 21 divided by 7. Oh, that's 3. 21x divided by 7 would be 3x. 14 divided by 7 is 2. Now you can double check yourself by multiplying, right? If I multiply this back out, I get 21x plus 14. Another thing to check, once you've factored out your GCF, make sure you don't have a common factor with the terms that are left in the parentheses. 3x and 2, the only common factor they have is 1, and if it's just 1, then that's not, that's not something we can do anything with, right? That's always going to be the case. But if I had factored out a number smaller than I needed to, then I would still need to factor some more. So just always double check. Okay, next, um, notice I have a 3z, a negative 21xz to the fourth. So 3 and 21 give me a common factor of 3. Um, both terms don't have an x, but both terms do have a z. So it's going to be 3z to the first power. Now, if I take 3z out of 3z, I'm left with 1, right? 3z divided by 3z is 1. You can't leave this out. You have to have the same number of terms in your parentheses as you had in your original uh, expression. 21 divided by 3 is 7. I keep the x, and then I'm subtracting exponents technically, because if I had this... I guess I should make that a negative. And I'm dividing it by 3z. This goes back to the um, um, section 5.1, the sections 5.1 and 5.2. And that's the type of thing we did there. That's why we had to learn that so that we we're able to do this. So basically, if I'm taking out one of the z's, I'm left with z cubed from that because I'm technically subtracting those exponents. Once again, you can double check by multiplying this out again. Okay, so the directions are the same. We're going to factor out the GCF in each polynomial. So on the first polynomial, we have in common a 3. So we're going to factor out a 3 from each of the terms. And then we also have an x, right? Because the first term has x to the first. So we always have to go with the smallest exponent. So here's what we have left. Um, 9x divided by 3x is 3. On the next one, it's, gonna, it's just going to be a 1x. So I write x. And then on the last one, negative 6 divided by 3 is negative 2. I factored out an x, so I'm left with x squared. All right, and that is it on that one. Okay, so let's go with this next one. So we have 12, 6, 18, and 18. Now, you notice I'm just, I'm not really worrying about signs here. I'm just saying, okay, we've got some um, coefficients, and we're going to look at what's the largest number I can take out of 12, 6, and 18, and that would be a 6. So I have a common factor of 6. All of the terms have a's and b's. So let's look through and we see that we have a to the first on two of these terms. So we can take out an a to the first. And then we have b to the first and b squared. So we can take out a b, right, b to the first. Now, remember, we're technically dividing by 6ab on each term. All right, so on the first one, <coughs> sorry, 6 goes into 12 two times. I'm going to have an a squared left because I took out an a, and then I don't have a b. On the second term, it's the same except for the sign, so I'm going to have a minus 1. And on the third term, 6 goes into 18 three times. The A's, uh, I took out the A, and there was just one of them. I took out one B, or B to the first, if you want to look at that, B to the first, and then I w I'm left with 3B. Now, remember, you can always multiply these to double-check yourself and make sure you get back the term you started with. 
On the last one, I'm going to have negative 18 divided by 6, so negative 3. I'm taking one of the A's, and I'm taking the B, and so that's it. All right? That's all we do. Now, you notice that there's not really a lot of work shown here, or that I'm showing. If you need to write the 6AB below your terms to make sure you get that division right, that's fine. Um, but I would practice it this way, and then you can always go back and check it by multiplying. <clears throat> okay, on this next one, it's a little bit different. So we want to kind of look at the two sides here. <laughs> so I have this 2 times x minus 4, and I have a 3y times x minus 4. And so what's in common? Well, what's in common is the x minus 4. So I'm factoring out an x minus 4, and then what's left, right, if I take x minus 4 out, I have a 2 left, right, I have this 2, and I have this 3y. So in this case, my common factor was a binomial, right, the GCF is x minus 4 for this expression. And now this is leading to factoring by grouping, and this is how they're going to look when we do that. So on the next one, I have a common factor of y minus 2, right? Because each, if you look at it this way, I have a y minus 2 on both parts of this. And then that's like a, one, a negative 1 right there. So my other factor will be the 9x minus 1. And that's my second binomial. Because on these, I do need to end up with that um, second binomial. And so those are factored. And let's see. Okay, I think we've got, we'll do this next slide because it kind of goes with what we've been doing. Now, if you notice, I have a 12, 3, negative 3 and a 1. So I don't have anything in common with my um, coefficients. I have b to the fourth, b to the second, and the 1 doesn't have a b. This happens sometimes, and basically we can't factor it. And you can say no common factor except 1. If that happens, it just doesn't factor. All right, and so this has to just stay the same. Later on, we're going to talk about um, when we get into trinomials, how something like this we might call prime because it won't factor. Okay, on this next one, I, I think that the number in common is not that known, well known, okay. Um, but one thing that you could do is if you take 38 and divide it by 2, you get 19. If you take 57 and divide by um, 3, you get 19. So 19 is my common coefficient, right, common to the two coefficients. And then on the x's, I can take x to the first power, right? That's my lower exponent. They both have y to the fourth, so that's definitely in common. So here's what's left. I have a 2, right? 38 divided by 19 is 2. I took out an x, so I'm left with x to the first. But the y's, right, they're eliminated because y to the fourth divided by y to the fourth is just 1. 19 goes into 57 three times, and x, y to the fourth is what I took out, so there's no variables with that second term. All right, so I'm going to stop this video, and then on the next one, we're going to be factoring by grouping.